on, anyway, on your part, that there's been a real lack of engagement around this, and we might discuss that a little bit further. But just um, from what you've, the presentations you've made here today, is it fair to say that the proposed legislation, that your sense of it is, that members of the general public and uh, suspects, perhaps even in a cell, who are under investigation for a crime, would actually enjoy better protections than the rank and file guardi, the force themselves, uh, if they were being under investigation by this new body? That's my first question. The second question I have, and somebody's alluded to this already, about GSOC, and can anybody tell me why it does take so long uh, in terms of uh, the outcome of cases, and is there a breach of right to fair trial around this? Um, we know it has been alluded to here that cases can go on, I think it was Antoinette said it, for years and years and years, uh, and members are left, I suppose, hanging in that no man's land, and is there you know, regulations around that? Um, and my third question is, um, as I said, I do sense annoyance from almost every uh, witness here today around this. Uh, and I'm just wondering, in terms of the formulation of, of legislation, is it normal that you wouldn't be consulted in the way you've spoken about here and that lack of engagement? Uh, or what is the normal procedure around that? So whoever would like to comment on those questions, I'd appreciate it. Yeah, Chair, if I may Please, uh, comment on it. Yeah, so... I suppose I'll take the first one first, uh, Deputy Smith. There has been no engagement whatsoever with AGSI on any of the proposals contained in this bill. In fact, the first we became aware of it was when we discovered it ourselves on the internet. Uh, so there has been no consultation, which is regrettable because we feel we would have had something to offer. As regards GSOC, uh, there is no uh, seemingly accountability by GSOC to anybody. Uh, they can go on uh, for years and years and years with investigations. Uh, I've had situations where members have been left in a limbo state for years, a failure by GSOC to respond to uh, letters from our AGSI solicitors, uh, members left uh, unanswered in their questions. There's no accountability for how it can take uh, them so long to investigate something. I heard uh, Deputy Kenny earlier on saying that there is need for an independent means for investigating Gardaí, and there absolutely is, but what's actually needed is an efficient independent means of investigating Gardaí. And the current system that's proposed in this bill is not efficient. It uh, does away with the principles of natural justice and fair procedure. It gives GSOC unfettered powers. There's no accountability. There's no time limit for the conclusion of investigations. Now in this bill, Gardaí can be examined uh, and investigated under performance regulations, conduct regulations, policy regulations, their legal obligations, disciplinary regulations, anti-corruption policies, breaches of the Garda Code, matters of public interest, in incidents of concern, uh, matters of public interest, uh, and all uh, at times without even notifying the member that they're under investigation. So there's a serious concern here about natural justice, fair procedures, and um, th those are some of the concerns we have. So uh, an efficient system <laughs> of investigating Gardaí is what's needed here. You said there, Antoinette, I just want to ask, did you say that uh, a guard can be under investigation without even being notified that they're under investigation? And that there's Correct, absolutely yeah. no time limit as to when that, that uh, investigation concludes? Yes, Deputy, and this is one of the real concerns when you talk about fairness. And I suppose every citizen is entitled to fair procedure and natural justice. And this is the uh, expanded powers and remit of GSOC are now going to allow, allow them to go unsupervised, unquestioned about what is considered a reasonable investigation. They can start an investigation on an incident of concern without even notifying the member concerned that they are under investigation. We don't know what constitutes an incident of concern. There's no definition. An incident of concern now, it seems, can emerge if uh, somebody posts up uh, a social media clip that can be out of context uh, and some keyboard warrior uh, generates a public outcry because of it and then suddenly a member can find themselves under investigation. If you are to be investigated, the reason for the investigation should be set out to you. And the final thing I'd say, Deputy, in relation to why we're so concerned about this, it seems the maximum powers are given to GSOC for a minimum disciplinary offence. So they carry the same powers to investigate something of a very serious criminal nature as they do for minor discipline. And that's unfair because it is a completely different set of circumstances. And what's worse is they can categorise this 
as a formal investigation without defining what a formal investigation actually consists of. And there are some of the concerns we have. Thanks, okay. Deputy. Okay, and just, Antonia, I'd have to say that I do see myself how it is really getting more and more difficult for the Gardaí to do their job around social media. And I think in the other committee that I chair around the online safety and media regulation bill, I would hope with the setting up of that commission it will address some of those concerns. It does make it hugely problematic. My final question on that is, at what point, if a guard doesn't actually know they're under investigation, at what point are they made aware of it? They have to be at some point. Is it on the outcome? Yeah, it doesn't say. It doesn't say at what point. It says that GSA can open the investigation, notwithstanding that they may not know the mem who the identity of the member is. But once they identify that member, the bill does not specify how or when the member should be actually notified. And these are the problems that we see contained in the bill. This is a lack of natural justice. If you are the subject of a complaint, when somebody becomes aware of you, are entitled to know what that complaint is and what the matter is that you are complained of because therein follows your rights. So, for example, if you're accused of a criminal offence, you have different rights and entitlements than you might have if it were minor discipline. So the bill is silent on it, and for that reason, it needs to be reviewed. Thank you. Is there any of the rest of our witnesses want to come back and name my questions? Is there, is there yeah. Yes, there I would. Wants to respond. Do you have any questions to take that up? Yeah, thank respond you very much yeah. for letting me back in. Uh, the, the question is, do suspects and members of the public enjoy greater protection? And I have to say, Deputy Smith, unfortunately, th that is our perception. We believe that is the case. And there's a number of examples I could give you, and, and, and I need to be careful that I, don't, that I don't identify someone. But I've spoken to one member. I've supported one Garda member in the last three weeks who has been suspended for over a year at this stage, and he is unsure as to the reason why he is suspended. And it's not unusual for a Garda member to be suspended um, subject to the, the GSOC process and to hear nothing for years, have no communication or no contact from GSOC. And, and that's unacceptable, we believe. Um, the, other, the other thing as to why GSOC takes so long, I have no idea. But again, that is, that is why we would be seeking proper and effective oversight in the, in the new legislation over the, um, over the way GSOC will operate. Chairperson Derek Mullen, if I may. Yes, I, I, we're, we're a little bit over time, but look, come in because you didn't get a chance, so I, I, it is useful to get the different views on this point. Yeah, Mr. Mullen, please do. Well, okay, uh, very briefly to Deputy Smith's first question. I'm representing civil servants uh, over 30 years, and um, this is probably the second occasion where we've seen uh, legislation uh, proposed or indeed introduced. Uh, the first occasion uh, was uh, in relation to the FEMPI measures uh, during uh, the economic crisis. Um, and obviously, we were very critical of that, and we spent quite some time uh, over the last few years uh, seeking to roll that back. Um, we've not had any consultation. When the heads of this bill were published, I couldn't point to one circumstance or, or one meeting where you could say that there was appropriate consultation on this matter. Um, and that's why I make the FEMPI comparison. Over the years, I'm uh, well used to organisations being established out of civil service departments, um, such as the Irish Aviation Authority, for instance, um, and, and there are many other examples. Uh, we're going to go through a, a process shortly with the Irish Prison Service. And there's been, you know, consultation uh, in all of those circumstances. We haven't had it on this occasion. We've questioned it. Um, and, you know, we're required under the terms of national agreements, Deputy, to comply uh, with all of the cooperation and consultation arrangements that are set down. And I think in this instance, the employer has been cavalier in terms of uh, their commitments on their national agreements, and there, it really isn't acceptable. Thank you. Mr. Well, that's very useful to have the views around the room. Thank you, Deputy Smith. Uh, 